Hello friends, this video on NEAT Ecology is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us look at the various protected areas in India. So let us first talk about the national parks. So if you look at state wise, there are many national parks in different states. For example, if you talk about Rajasthan. So in Rajasthan, you have the desert national park. If you talk about Gujarat, there you have the Gir National Park. You talk about Jharkhand, so which is here. So this is Jharkhand. So in Jharkhand, you have the Hazari Bagh National Park. In Uttarakhand, this is Uttarakhand. So in Uttarakhand, you have Jim Corbett National Park. UP, you have Dudhuva National Park. Again, in the southern parts of the country, in Karnataka, you have Bandipur National Park. You also have Banaghatta National Park. Again, if you go towards MP, you have Bandhavgar National Park. So, in fact, these are just a few of them. So, in different states, you have many different national parks, which are extremely protected areas for conservation of plant and animal species. Now, let's look at the animal sanctuaries. Now, there exists a total of 515 animal sanctuaries. So, how many animal sanctuaries do we have in India? Approximately 515 animal sanctuaries. Now, how many national parks do we have in India? So, as per a record of 2012, there are 112 national parks in India. In 1970, it was found that there were only five national parks. So you see from 1970 to 212, the number of national parks have increased from five to 112, which is a huge increase. And why was this increase? This increase is mainly because of a, a act which came in 1972 called the Wildlife Protection Act. Because once this act came into picture, so a lot of emphasis was given on protecting different animals. And in order to protect animals, these national parks were created. Okay, now let us talk, uh, name some of the animal sanctuaries in India. For example, in Bihar, you have the Rajgir animal sanctuary. So here in Bihar, you have the Rajgir animal sanctuary. In Chhattisgarh, you have Badal Kohl sanctuary. In Goa, you have Salim Ali bird sanctuary. In Urissa, you have the Chilka bird sanctuary. In Himachal Pradesh, you have Nana Devi animal sanctuary. So these are all different animal sanctuaries. You have huge number of sanctuaries as you can see from the data. Now the third protected area is the biosphere reserve. Now in India, we have a total of 18 biosphere reserves. Now some of the examples of biosphere reserves are the Sundarbans Biosphere Reserve in West Bengal. So examples of biosphere reserve would be Sundarbans in West Bengal. You have Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve in Tamil Nadu. And you have Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve in Uttarakhand. You have Panchmari Biosphere Reserve in Madhya Pradesh. You also have the Great Nicobar Biosphere Reserve in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So these are examples of some of the biosphere reserves in India. So with this you get an idea that there are huge number of protected areas either in the form of national park, sanctuary or biosphere reserves in India. Now, the next question is how these protected areas help in biodiversity conservation? What do they do? So first of all, cultivation is prohibited. So in these areas, uh, you are not allowed to uh, cultivate crops like you are not allowed to do agriculture in these areas because when you start doing agriculture, what happens? The natural habitat of the organisms are spoiled. Right? So cultivation is not allowed. Secondly, grazing is not allowed because due to overgrazing also the uh, habitat of uh, loss of habitat takes place. So here grazing is not at all allowed. Deforestation is prohibited. So you are not, even though you are allowed to visit these national parks or sanctuaries, but you are not allowed to cut 
a single tree so deforestation is again strictly prohibited in fact a huge amount of fine and punishment is given in case you are seen cutting down a tree in these areas hunting is prohibited again hunting is strictly prohibited because if you look at these deforestation hunting uh, overgrazing cultivation all of these uh, give threat to the habitat or give threat to the endangered species now just to protect these species all of these are not allowed in these protected areas now since these things are these activities are not allowed in the protected areas it automatically keeps the plant and animal species protected now thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you